So you're always a bit agitated, it's always like you had a little bit of caffeine, you can't sleep that well. This will hamper your recovery a little bit. Hello friends, I wanted to tell you guys today about my views on pre-workout androgens. To begin, what are pre-workouts for? The purpose of a pre-workout is to increase nervous system signaling, to improve sympathetic nervous system signaling, to improve the efficiency of the nervous system so that you're acutely stronger in anaerobic exercises. If you're acutely stronger in the gym and you lift more weight in the gym, you should, in the end, gain more strength over time, even if you're, gaining, you're stronger in the gym because of using a substance before the gym. There's evidence, of course, that caffeine and other pre-workouts increase anaerobic strength performance. And they do this via their modulation of adrenaline, which then modulates CM. So they increase strength and they do all these other kind of things. They improve neuronal signaling and so on. So that's why pre-workouts are used. But why is the workout period so critical? Aside from the fact that that's when you're getting the stimulus, lifting weights. You've got to be stronger to lift weights, but there's something else also. The nutrition around the workout is very important. Nutrition after the workout is the most critical period of nutrition during the day. That's why people take fast digesting carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, insulin, and protein right after the workout. They try to upregulate mTOR so that people can recover the best after the workout. The time period that you'd want mTOR to be the max maximized is around your workout and right after your workout in general, right? So why are androgens better than other pre-workouts? Well, first of all, caffeine and androgens both modulate adrenaline. And I would say that it's clear that androgens modulate ad adrenaline more. For example, caffeine doesn't modulate noradrenaline, mainly modulates ad systemic adrenaline levels. Androgens do more than that. But androgens also upregulate mTOR on their own. So having higher androgens around your workout, for example, is similar to if you weren't taking androgens, eating a lot of carbohydrates and protein after the meal, trying to raise mTOR, IGF-1, and all of those things. Androgens on their own increase IGF-1 temporarily for the time that they're in your body. So androgens really do a lot around the workout. They make you stronger. They sort of handle your pre-workout and post-workout nutrition as well. They improve all of that. So why don't we just upregulate androgens all the time? Why do we need it as a pre-workout? Why don't we, for example, take Trenbolone acetate, which greatly improves nervous system signaling, acutely makes you stronger, just like Anadrol or Test Suspension or Anavar, but it does this 24-7. Why do you not want that? Couple of reasons. Well, first of all, there's a paradox about nervous system signaling. Now, this I, I call it paradox. This is what it is. If you increase sympathetic nervous drive acutely, around the gym, around the time period you work out, you will be stronger and you'll recover better. But if you're always in a sympathetically nervously driven state, say for example, you're on Trenbolone all the time, so you're always a bit agitated, it's always like you had a little bit of caffeine, you can't sleep that well, this will hamper your recovery a little bit. There's a lot of evidence to show that inflammation and sympathetic nervous drive and adrenaline limits recovery. So that's the first paradox. It's good to have high nervous system signaling around the workout, but not necessarily good to have it at night. So something like Trenbolone wouldn't be very great for you. And something like take, take, taking caffeine all day wouldn't be really great for you either. You really want it around the workout. A second reason is that the harm reduction. You don't want androgen signaling high all the time. We know that androgen signaling, irrespective of your weight, irrespective of your blood pressure, is harmful to the kidneys and can cause glomerulosclerosis. So you don't want high androgen levels all the time like with Tren, because you get more damage and the times that you benefit the most from it is around the workout. So what do I suggest for people that want to reduce the harm? People who are already on PEDs and they're athletes and they're trying to get stronger for their sport and they're okay with PEDs, but they want to reduce the risks of it. I think that for these people, it may be better to reduce their total androgen load, especially sympathetically nervous driving kind of compounds like Tren or things like that. They should take relaxing compounds that don't drive their sympathetic nervous system, something like Primobolan or Equipoise or things like that. And then around their workouts, I believe they should take androgens without an ester. It doesn't really matter if they're orals or not orals, but the point is that they're, they don't have an ester. So if you inject testosterone suspension without an ester two hours before your workout or an hour and a half, or even an hour before your workout, depending on where you inject it, you'll be acutely stronger for a few hours and get mTOR elevated for a few hours. Same thing will happen if you take any oral. So these things will increase your mTOR around the workout, 
will make you much stronger in the workout than caffeine does and will not allow you to have this overall higher androgenic signaling which is so damaging for the body. Anyway guys, this is just some food for thought. Of course, orals, not all orals, Anadrol in particular and Dianabol and Halotestin and Winstrol can be particularly dangerous for the liver. But this is not so much true for injectable testosterone suspension as well as Anavar, which are the two things that I think are a great choice for people that are trying to minimize harm. Taking Anavar before their workout, say four days a week or so on their most intense days, or, or taking out of our plus testosterone suspension before the workout or one of them or if somebody isn't so worried about their health an anadrol four days a week before the workout or anadrol with testosterone suspension which is what i used to do back in the day anyway guys i hope this was helpful maybe it gives you some food for thought and some ideas on harm reduction to continue working toward your goals while hurting your body the least i wish you guys a great day i'll see you soon